Hi, this is Terry with the Covered Chipboard, and I'm here today with a little video on the construction of what is called the uh, Witch Hazel's Cafe. It's the second building in my Halloween -y Town um, series. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through the basic construction. The pattern will be in my shop at the Covered Chipboard, and you'll find the URL for my shop at the end of this video. Um, the patterns for the basic construction, um, including windows and a little bit of trim, the finishing is really left up to you. I will have a post on my blog that um, includes this video plus my finishing, um, how I finished it. So you can look at that later on. But let's get started. I've pre-folded everything. And what you need to do is to separate your pieces out. And you might want to separate them out and go ahead and make a little note on them. You can see here I've marked B for bottom, <clears throat> T for top, and up for the upper part. Same thing on these, bottom and top. So you have two levels. You have a bottom level, which is the bigger piece, and a top level, which is the smaller piece. And with this, you'll have... Um, two bottom pieces, one top piece, and then two upper pieces. And on this upper piece, you'll find some score marks on four sides. And that's just a, those aren't fold lines. They're just to um, give you a guide as to where to place the upper one if you want. Or to, actually it's to attach on here. Um, then you have some windows. You'll have this little roof that goes up on the upper part. And with the smaller part, you'll have two bottom pieces and one top piece. So, basically you just fold all your tabs inward, on the fold lines inward. And then once you get these two done, you're going to attach these two together. Now one of these has a door, and these are slanted. The top is smaller than the bottom. So you want to look at it and kind of see which way it's slanting on this piece. On this piece, it's easy to tell because the door is at the bottom. Another way is that your tab will only fit. If you've got it this way, your tabs aren't going to fit. So obviously, it has to go like this. So let's go ahead and glue these together. I'm just using um, Scotch Quick Dry Tacky Glue. And this material is the Cricut um, um, craft board in black. You can use, you can build it out of chipboard, uh, a thinner chipboard because you want to be able to fold it. Uh, cardboard, even a heavy card sock will work because once you get all the pieces together and you get your finishing items on, it's pretty sturdy. So we're just going to glue this tab here. And you want to make sure you get these pretty even at the bottom and the top. You want to make sure these line up and that they're level. And if you get glue on this part, don't worry about it because it's not going to show. It's going to be covered up with your, your either shingles or brick pattern, whatever, however you decide to um, finish it. So once that's glued... Actually, we want to stop once you get that piece glued. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our, um, let me move these pieces out of the way, the vellum in for the windows and the door. So I've got my vellum pieces cut out over here. And let's see, one, two, three, four, these go here. And these go over here. And there is one. So you'll have six of these longer pieces, four of a smaller square, and then one single one. And the single one goes in your door. And it's wedged between. Oh, if I get hold of this. It's wedged between, between two pieces. So um, we won't do that one right now. We'll have to go ahead, I guess, and attach 
one piece. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do these now. And I left a pretty good bit around the edges for these. And that's all you're going to do. If you wanted, you can also put your glue on here. And it doesn't take much to hold these. They don't have to be pretty or straight or anything because they are not going to show. This will be all closed up when you're done. Okay, I've got those, my vellum in. And as you can see, I wasn't particularly neat with it. You don't need to be. Again, the door we don't have to worry about because you're going to put it on from the outside. So now we're going to go ahead and complete this piece. Again, make sure you're even, at the, you're flush at the top and the bottom. And give that just a couple of seconds to dry and the next thing we're going to do is take our uh, bottom pieces and one you're going to you're going to put glue on all these tabs down here at the bottom and then you're going to put this in from the top you can try putting in from the bottom if you want um, I just found that going but through the top works best for me one thing I did not remember to do was to cut a hole for the tea light, so I will fix that in the files. I'm going to stop the video, recut my pieces, and I'll be back. Okay, I recut my pieces, and I'm back here with them. Um, so I'm going to now take one of these pieces and place it down inside here. I'm just going to go in here and add glue to all of these tabs again you don't need to be particularly neat with this just get enough glue on there so that those tabs will hold and then we're going to take this and whoops one not both and shove it down in there and you have to kind of it's a tight fit, so you're going to have to kind of wiggle it around to get it to fall down in there. Just kind of get one side going and then start pushing the other side. And then you want to press on those tabs. And like I said, it feels like it's too big, but it's not. It will fit. You just have to get it wedged in there. Give those a few seconds. There we go. And then this piece fits right on the bottom. Let's see, I got a tab that didn't stick there. few more seconds. Give it a little bit more drying time here. Okay. Now I'm going to go around and don't know why this one didn't want to stick either. I want to get right up to the edge of this as 
close as I can. And then the rest you can just kind of, and then you're going to just line this up. Set it right on top there. Just get your circles good and it'll be in the right place if you line up right here. Again, I'm going to push from the inside for a few minutes. Let that attach. And on your vellum, you can leave it plain like this, or you could use alcohol ink on it if you want, and color it. And now you can see our tea light will fit right inside there. So the next part would be the top piece, which is going to fit right here. And you can't really get your fingers up in here, but you could get a tool in there once you turned it over if you wanted to. I'm just going to go ahead and add glue to all the tabs. You could use score tape on this part too if you wanted. Although, with stuff like this where it really matters that it lines up, I you don't have any wiggle room with score tape, so that's kind of a, an issue. And just kind of play with this for a second until you get it. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not going to show. Because you have the other two pieces that are going to go over the top. So just try to get it neat. And then I'm going to take this and make sure all my tabs are stuck down in there. Oops, just give that a couple of seconds. That's good enough. I got one there that doesn't want to stick. This piece is more just to hold the shape than it is to be seen. So then the next part is you've got these two pieces. So you want to take one piece that has the score marks on it and glue it to the other piece. And glue it so that you can still see those, the one side you can still see those score marks on it. Once that's done, then you're going to glue this on top of here and the score marks are for you to guide where to place your piece. So just put along the edges here. And then you can grab hold of one of those or get it right up next to one of those other ones. Make sure you're equal there. And you're just trying to get equal amount of distance all the way around. So you might have to do a little bit of wiggling once you get it in there. Okay, 
that looks good to me. I'm a little bit, well, that looks good enough to me. And then I'm going to use this tool again and just kind of poke down in there. Kind of help spread that glue out some. And let that dry. So we can set this aside for a few minutes. There's our first part done. Now on here, there is a door I showed you before. You don't want to apply it yet because you want to do your siding first. But this door will fit right here, like that. And then you have a second door. Oh, lost my little door piece. Which is a solid door. It has two pieces that are glued together. Then you glue these strips on top. And one across this way. And one across this way. So that'll kind of give you the idea of what it looks like. And that door is placed on the solid piece right here. Just about in the same spot that this door is. So a little bit up from the bottom and in the center. And we'll do that when we do our finishing. Again, you don't want to do your doors or your windows until you have done your siding. So let's set this aside. This doesn't want to seem to be grabbing around that edge. If you have some that come loose, you can squish some more glue in here. I probably should. Okay, you can see that I've already added my vellum for my windows. And I want to tell you, on these two, there won't be uh, windows, but what we're going to do is do fake windows. So we're actually going to put some shutters here. And there are these little pieces like this. So you're going to have one that goes here and one that goes here as if the shutters are closed. And I think what I might do is go back and add a, an actual window frame that's just a solid piece to go behind these just to give it more depth. So then it will have the window depth, depth plus the shutter depth. So um, I'll add those to the um, file before I release it. And again, this is put together in the same way that the other was. Make sure that you've got, you'll know you have them right when they're kind of leaning in and you have tabs on opposite ends. So you're just gonna connect them like you did the bigger part. Making sure that you line the bottom and the top up. I'll just give that a second. It takes a craft board just a little bit longer to grab than cardstock because it's not as porous. And we'll do this side. Again, don't worry if you get messy because it's not going to matter. It's all going to be covered up. Try to be neat, but it's not a huge ordeal if you're not. I'm going to give that a second to um, kind of reshape your piece. And again, you've got two bottom pieces. So you're going to take one, and these won't have any holes. Well, actually, these need to have holes too, so I'll have to recut those. So I'll do that and be right back. Okay, <clears throat> as I was cutting these the, the bottom pieces for here, I also realized that you don't want to have to put, or you can't actually use two tea lights because this top part gets attached here. And then you'll have whatever you put on the, the base around here. So I realized that the top for the bottom piece needs to have a hole in it as well. 
So I've, I've fixed those pieces in the file, but for me, I didn't want to waste more material, so I just cut a little hole here. That'll let the light through. But um, in the um, files, it will have the holes in it. So you have these two pieces. Again, you're going to fix it just like they're the bottom. You're going to work it just like you did the other one. So you're going to come in here and put glue on all these tabs. And if you want, you can bend these tabs up like this to add your glue to them. If you find that easier. For me, I just do it this way. And then you're going to shove this piece down in there, just like you did the other one. Oops, it's a little tricky, but just keep pushing and you'll get it in there right. I'm sorry, that's my dog in the background. She's whining it, I think. That might be the trash people or somebody outside. Okay. And then once you've got that in there, you're going to do the same thing by... I'm going to stick a little extra right there. Going around the edges. And then glue this piece on. Right like that. And again, if you just match, um, match up these this inner circles, you'll be in the right spot. I'm going to push on that a few minutes. Let it get dry. And then you have the top piece to put on. And that's just putting glue on all your tabs. You do want to try to get up next to the edge, the outer edge. Just going to lay that on top. Try to get it as even as you can. You may have to push it around. Again, there's uh, a roof over this so you won't see this. You just want to get it as close as you can to hold the shape. And if you need to, you can push from the inside. Okay, and now this piece will be placed one of these blank spots. You can pick one to use as your front door. And this will be placed on top of here. And as long as you've got this hole over this hole, you're fine. Enough light will come up through the top. And you just kind of place it however you want. I just kind of set mine back a little. And the front door for the bottom is here, so I made the front door for here over here. I didn't put them in the same spot. And then you can decorate your uh, ledge here. And if you want, what I suggest is that you decorate the top of this 
before you attach. So I actually would put my siding on this and my door, my windows, set it aside, then come to this piece, put your siding on your door and your windows, and then I would take this piece, set it on top, and get it aligned wherever you want it. Let's say I'm going to put mine right like that. Actually, I'm going to do it this way because I want... Where's my door? There's my door. I want them on the opposite. Line that up like I want it. And then I'm going to draw around the edge with a pencil. And that gives me a line so I know that when I decorate this top level, I don't want to go beyond this this drawn line so that this will sit firmly. As for your the turret or the roof, um, you just fold them all inward and then once you get them folded inward, you just want to take your glue, if I can get it to come out there, fold this over, make sure that you're even on your bottom that one's not protruding further than the other side and then you're just going to kind of hold that together and you want to kind of pinch this top part so that it gets you'll have a little tiny gap I don't know if you can see it but you don't want a big gap so you want to make sure you get those close enough together up there so that you don't have a big gap on it And then we can just set that aside. To dry. Um, let's see. The next thing. Like I said. I will show you how to do your finishing work. On the post. I'm not going to do that in the video. Because it takes way too long. That's it for right now. That's your basic construction of these three pieces. From here on out. It's just decoration. Down below, you'll find a link to the post on my blog with more information on how I finished this. And um, it will also include a materials list for you. So check that out. And I hope you decide to make the project and have fun making it. Thank you for watching. Bye. I just wanted to do a quick little video here. These are my trimming pieces. Um, and I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what they look like. Uh, I didn't show the build on them because they're pretty self-explanatory. But for the bottom, you're going to have your six windows. Then you're going to have two doors. A front door with a bat on it and the back door. <clears throat> and basically, for this door, you have two pieces which I've wedged the um, vellum in between the two pieces. And then you have this other piece that's got uh, two bars and a bat that goes on. And then you have an extra bat and that goes on again to give it some more dimension. And um, I've used Ranger Distress Ink, Tim Holtz Dist Dist ah! Distress Ink Black Soot. And I've just dabbed this in there and then went around the edges of everything to distress it a little bit. I did choose a lime green. <clears throat> in the instructions, I note lime green, orange, whatever color, purple, whatever color you want to use with your house, but I chose the lime green. And on the back door, you have two pieces like this, which you stick together, and then you'll have the three long boards that you place on top and the two boards that go across. And on the upper floor, you have this small door. It's just one piece. Uh, you could use two if you want, if you think you need to. And then it's got two bars going across. And um, the handles, you can see my glue still drying. The handles are just a little piece of a branch, a twig that I got out of the yard off of a bush. And I've just cut it down to little pieces. <clears throat> also for the top, you'll have four windows and three closed windows. So for the closed windows... It's just a single sheet that looks like this. And then I have the, you have these two little rectangles that make the shutters. 
<clears throat> and I actually glued them on and then I took it and bent it a little bit. So then when I made it go back, I think it's going to make it kind of pooch up a little bit when you glue it on. And that's how I made the shutters. And again, the handles are those that branch again. And I may come back and put some brown distress ink on top of the handles or brown marker uh, to color them. I don't really like them this light color. The last or the next piece would be this that goes, it's a canopy that goes over the front door area like this. And um, this, you'll have a straight piece. That's what gets glued to the piece here. You may need to glue just a little bit right here on these sides to keep them flush, um, but try it and see. And then you've just folded it with these points going downward, and I've come in and inked and inked all the points. You won't need glue here. Just fold them a couple of times, and they'll hang straight down. So that's all there is to that. This is the trim that goes up at the top here. Now, it doesn't go above the front door. You could put it there if you want, so that's up to you. <clears throat> but you start here at the windows, and it's got slits in it. It's hard to hold on there when it's not glued. So you can make the corners well. And just keep going and get it stuck up in there however best you can. You may have to do a little trimming along this back edge. I did redo these. Um, so uh, they're smaller than what you see here because they don't need to be any wider than what this lip is. So if you get it up there and it's not fitting, then just trim off that back piece a little bit. You can hold these together and just keep going around or you can cut them. You can see where I've got V's cut in the top because each side should hold seven points. So if you wanna go ahead and just pull these apart you can, and it might be easier to glue up there that way. And that's all of the um, doors and windows and that part of the finishing. So um, the next thing I would do will be the... I was going to do siding, but I don't think I'm going to do siding. I think I'm going to cover these with a full sheet. And I'm going to go ahead and include the outer uh, area in the files for you if you want to do it this way and not use um, siding strips. But I think I'm going to use a black cardstock and an embossing folder, which is a spider web embossing folder from DeReese. You can get it um, on Amazon. I'll put a link in my post on where you can grab that. Um, <clears throat> but I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to emboss it and then highlight it uh, like I did the roof on the other, or on the Alice house that I did, the Alice in Wonderland or Alice in Halloween Land. Um, I think I'm gonna do it that way. Just to be different. I don't want them all to be a dark black or dark gray. So I wanted something a little different. So that's all of that part. And again, this will all be on the post. Um, a link to the post will be included in the descriptions. It's also at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.